<laughs> and he'll do that with with the baseball, like because I used to be a big Cardinals fan, and now I'm like, meh. Yeah. Doing? I think yeah. it was just because my dad was so into sports. Like I felt like growing up, like I needed to be into sports to have something in common with him. I wasn't into sport. Well, see, we were into the odd sports because like, I was a gymnast and like cricket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally play cricket. Polo. Oh my god. <laughs> um, no cross. A water polo. <laughs> but um, but we just uh, no. We I mean I was a gymnast and a dancer, so I didn't look oh. at any of that other stuff and and a swimmer. Mm-hmm. And then my brothers were musicians, and so I mean I was a cheerleader in school and stuff like that, but. I don't think I even gave a crap about the teams that were playing. I was like, I was like, I'm cheering, I'm dancing, I don't care. Right? Is it my turn? Is it my turn to be in the spotlight? Is it right. my turn? Right. Are you guys done hitting each other? Like, right? I think it's just. I think sports are just an excuse for guys to grab each other's asses. But that's my own personal. <laughs> <laughs> that's my own personal thought. And then, and wow, yeah. Yeah, Steve. Uh, Steve thinks it's just mindless and a waste of your brain and yeah. time. And I agree. Toby does too. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. See, so like before Steve, like I was, I dated people that were like all of it. Like Sundays, you didn't do anything but watch the game. No, Ugh. and it was uh, it was horrible. So now that I don't have to, I'm just like, I have a I have a date back like i don't have a day that goes to sports i'll watch the super bowl but it's not for yeah, the, it's, it's for the half for the halftime show. show and the commercials which have right. gotten pretty lame lately they're not even coming up with good commercials right. anymore come on people step it up i know right step it up natty waters you know she did that um commercial contest last year for the super bowl ad yeah she's she's gonna be the one she's gonna be the one to change things good that's, i hope that's so my thought go natty <laughs> <laughs> so it's time it's time for woman crush the week are you ready mm-hmm. all right you go first because you are the guest okay well i will do that so this is gonna come off guard for her um but this is for a girlfriend of mine um her name's brandy parado and she'll never, never Brandy, see this one Brandy, Brandy. coming. Um, she works at the Memphis Zoo. She takes care of all of the plant life and oh, fun. Um, does a lot of the landscaping type things. Um, I would love to have a job like that where you didn't have to really interact with people. <laughs> I th- well, she admits that she likes animals more than people, which is <laughs> because totally because they don't talk back. Right, right. But she's freaking. She's she's tall. She's gorgeous. She's got that sexy Demi Moore voice, like that Ooh, deep, like grovelly. Yeah, like, yeah. I like, smoked a pack a day. Y- yeah, kind <laughs> of thing. Yeah, and um, she's just drop dead gorgeous. I've known her since. Junior high and and I didn't mean that in a bad way, we, but that gravelly voice. Yeah, that, sorry. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's a deep, <laughs> it's a deep gravelly voice. But um, since junior high, since junior high, and we were cheerleaders and Aww. together and stuff. And um, I need a picture she, of you cheerleading. Do you have that? Oh, good lord! I don't freaking know. Somewhere. That would be fun. I a two girls in a bottle of wine throwback Thursday picture. Uh, I'll have to. The assignment has been made. I'll Go have for to it. Dig. Brandy, I let me know if you've got one because I don't I don't know where they would be right now. Or Helen, if you're listening, you would have it too somewhere. I don't know. Now you anyway. have to post the podcast on their walls. Yes. Yeah. That is something I'm I'm trying to get my co host to do more of. Post on other people's walls. Share on your wall multiple times a week. Let's get the word out there. Sorry. Okay. So, well, it's going on Brandy's wall for sure. Thank and you, Brandy. Probably. So, um, anyway, w- let me explain to you why Brandy is my girl crush of the week. One, we both have a love for music and we're both goofy about that stuff. And we both will be, if we were in a bar, we would be, if nobody were dancing, we would be the two up there making absolute asses of ourselves dancing in <laughs> front of everybody. And we wouldn't really care. Right. So, um, but the reason why she is a woman crush of the week for me is because she um, she's been married to her husband for a long time. Um, he ended up with cancer, which they've lovingly named Sigourney because as uh, 
<laughs> as the alien that grew in his body. I totally which, got that. Reference. And she's and she's a writer, so she Aww. she too, and so she, you know, she she's and she's incredibly intelligent, and um, she has done nothing but sacrifice and work her butt off when um, Lo is what his nickname is is down and ill. And she's done nothing but care for him, and and uh, she loves her job so much because they have given her the time off when she's needed to take care of Lo and things like that. And she even has looked up um, herbal concoctions and Chinese medicine and things like that that, uh, that have actually helped um, rid her husband of the cancer in his body. Um, so he's slowly on the mend, but um, she's sacrificed so much that she ended up in the hospital last mm-hmm. week because of a low heart rate and being underweight because she's just she's selflessly given without taking and she's just done an unreal job in just taking such amazing care of low and not even thinking twice about herself. She's just, it's completely selfless. So that's just how she is. And she's kept a sense of humor through the whole thing. Um, she, and her husband has too. And I think that's what's given them their strength is their sense of humor and being able to find humor in things as they go along or if he has to be in the hospital or whatever. And so, I mean, even into calling the things the Gorney and right. <laughs> things like that. So, you know, she, so she's, she's just very selfless and she's worked very hard and, and just the, the strength in her is incredible. So, well, that's awesome. There you go, Brandy. Love you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine is not a celebrity, but a businesswoman. I've been trying to like get away from Hollywood. And um, and you've had some amazing businesswomen that you've brought up. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's just because of the books I've been reading lately have kind of like put these names into my world. Um, and so, yeah. So her name is Margaret Cushing Whitman. She goes by Meg Whitman. She was born in 1956. She's an American business executive and political candidate. She is the chairwoman, president, and chief executive officer of Hewlett Packard. So we all know oh, wow. that company. She's a native of Long Island, New York. She's a graduate of Princeton University and Harvard Business School. She served as an executive in the Walt Disney Company, where she was vice president of strategic planning through the 1980s. And in the 90s, she served as an executive for DreamWorks, Procter & Gamble, and Hasbro. Those are huge companies. All wow. of them. And she served as president and chief executive officer of eBay from 1998 to 2008. And during her 10 years with the company, she oversaw its expansion from 30 employees and $4 million in annual revenue to more than 15,000 employees and $8 billion, with a B, in annual revenue. In 2014, she was named 20th in Forbes' list of the 100 most powerful women in the world. And in 2008, she was cited by the New York Times as among the women most likely to become the first female president of the United States. So I just find that to be awe-inspiring. Wow. When I love to hear that women have pushed themselves to yes, there's no such amazing ceiling. levels and everything else, which I have a huge bitch about right now. What's going on? Okay, I have never been a fan of The View. Sorry, people, but I'm not. Yeah, I don't watch. Um, I'm at work. I just, I've never been a fan of them. And the fact that they got on to... Um, the Colorado uh, candidate for Miss... Miss America or Miss Universe? Miss one, America. Miss America. About her being a nurse and, you know... Her, yeah, her and, talent was the whole nurse monologue. Right. Which, they, which yeah. they were rude and snotty and I, I swear to god i just want to smack those chicks most of the time anyway because mm-hmm. they annoy the hell out of me but the fact that somebody would be so degrading about the fact that somebody's talent is a nurse that is a talent and that takes huge huge responsibility and the love and the care 
I, that I nurses thought, have to give yes. to people and the appreciation that their patients have for them. You know, especially whenever you get a nurse who truly cares about what she's doing. You mm-hmm. know, I, I, I think that's better than twirling a freaking baton that's on fire and dancing right. around a stage. And when, so, you, when you look at, you know, I thought maybe that I wanted to be a nurse when my recruiting career kind of got boring to me, mm-hmm. probably about four years ago. And um, so I started volunteering at Denver Health just to kind of see what that was like. Yeah. The stuff that they have to deal with, the heartache that they have to see on a daily basis. Yeah. The strength they have to show to complete strangers. It, I don't, I I'm like, I don't have this in me. I don't have it in me. But those men and women that are nurses are yes. just phenomenal. They are superheroes. Well, when my dad was in the hospital, we had amazing nurses that mm-hmm. took care of him. And it, to me, you know, the just just the care that they gave my father. And, and I, I mean, just even even just giving him a little bit of humor. Mm-hmm. you know, during the time frame that he was in the hospital was invaluable, you right. know. And then my girlfriend, who is the spitting image of Betty Page, she's oh. a drop-dead gorgeous Suzanne. You know who you are, Susie. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she was my girl crush of the I, Yeah. Month. Yeah. Um, she had just started her nursing when my dad was in the hospital and she came in and my dad was just, his eyes lit up and he goes, Oh, there's my girl. And he was, he just, he just lit up and her mother was a nurse too. So my parents knew her mother and, and he was so proud of her that she became a nurse that, and she just, you know, she just lit up his day when she'd walk in. So just, and that's what they can do. Yeah. That's what they can do. It's. It's amazing. So, yeah. Absolutely. Let's not spend any more time talking about the view because yeah. they're evil. Sorry. <laughs> no. No, you're yeah. fine. You're fine. So it's time for the T-Zone with T-Squared. Okay. I don't know why that says also Hollywood happenings because we have no Hollywood happenings this week. I looked and there's nothing to talk about. Nah. Nah, whatever. So what's going on with the T-Zone? So, T-Zone. Okay, so... This time I am not going to give anybody any, like, creams or anything okay. like that or All right. anything to take internally. <laughs> what I am, unless you want to do edibles, whatever, Whoa, you know, works on you. I work in HR. <laughs> we live in Colorado. <laughs> Two very um, different worlds Yes, here. yes. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Um, you know, I was, I had a friend of mine pull back, pull up on my Facebook something that I had seen um, quite some time back, and it was a video of where a forensic artist didn't see the person behind the um, curtain, but was asking them questions about what they thought they looked like, mm-hmm. and then they had another person who actually met the people. And then described them. And they did a side-by-side drawing of the person and the way the one person thought they looked and the way the other person thought they looked. And you realize how incredibly hard we are on ourselves. And in looking at these pictures, they went from one woman thought she looked fat in her picture, the way she described herself, to the other picture looking very pretty and, you know, very well kept and things like that. And I think what we need to do for our own health and our own beauty is realize that we all have beauty. We do. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you have a cute nose, you have pretty lips, you have pretty eyes. There is beauty in you. And I don't care what cream, what pill what anything that you take coconut oil coconut oil anything you do that janet can't swallow um that that you take or do you you have to look in the mirror and remind yourself of your beauty 
because the only beauty that's going to come out of you is from the inside. So, which is very hard, and you know this. 